What's up, family? How y'all doing today? How's the day going so far? It's 2.29 p.m. here on the East Coast in North Carolina. And um, I just got wind of a story that I decided I was going to bring y'all right quick before I leave out and go take care of some business. But I thought that, you know, y'all needed to hear this because this is the first that I've heard of it. And um, it's not being talked about a whole lot on mainstream media. It's not being talked about a whole lot in mainstream media. And once we get into this story, you'll understand the reason why. But this is something that you need to know about. This is something that we need to pay attention to. This is something that we definitely that definitely needs to become a part of our dis discussion as foundational black Americans because um, it's history repeating itself. It's history repeating itself, and it's very significant. It's very significant, especially now in this black empowerment movement, this movement towards reparations, this movement towards tangibles, uh, uh, with what we've got, on, got going on as far as the 2020 voting situation is concerned with these candidates and all of that is very, very important and it's very relevant. And like I said, it's history starting to repeat itself. So we really need to pay attention to stories like this. We, need, we, we, we really need to pay attention when we're out and about, when we're out conducting our normal everyday business, when we're out about conducting and doing things that we normally do on a regular basis, we need to be paying attention. We need to be paying attention. We need to be armed. We need to be aware. Uh, we need to start taking self-defense classes. We need to start sending our black kids to take self-defense classes. Um, we got to we got to get it together, and we've got to finally accept that as foundational black Americans, we are at war. We are at war. There is there is a war that has been waged on us. It's been, we've been at war. And we just won't accept it. We just won't accept it. And we won't mobilize ourselves as soldiers, as people that are at war and in a war. But anyway, because I can't be here long with you, let's, let's get on into this story. Because I just found out about it today. And this was something that was first reported on November the 19th, 2019. So it, 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 it's, it's been almost uh, uh, 10 days. Since it, as far as it being reported on. And like I said, it's not something that I've heard anything about. Uh, mainstream media is certainly not doing a whole lot of talking about this because if they were, other people would have brought it out by now, especially other voices in the new black media would have discussed it and talked about it by now. Um, so let, let's get into this. This article is coming from ABC News. And um, it's by Jeff Martin from the Associated Press, November the 19th, 2019, 8.47 p.m. Police, white girl, white teen girl aimed to attack black Georgia church. Again, white teen girl, a white teenage girl aimed to attack a black Georgia church. So we have another Dylan Roof type thing that was being planned for a black church. All right. Police say a white teenage girl is accused of plotting to attack a mostly black church in North Georgia. And it has a picture of the church. Uh, and under the picture, it says, this November 19, 2019 photo shows the Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church in Gainesville, Georgia. A white 16-year-old girl is accused of plotting to attack a mostly black church in Gainesville, where police say she planned to kill worshipers because of their race. Not because uh, of their religion, not because of their religious belief, not because of their faith, but they're putting it they're putting it out here because of their race. She planned to go in this black church and kill these black worshipers because of their race. Anyway, a white 16 year old girl is accused of plotting to attack a mostly black church in North Georgia City, where people say in a North Georgia city where people say she planned to kill worshipers because of their race. Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church has a predominantly black congregation. 
Gainesville Police Chief Jay Parrish said in a statement Tuesday. Our investigation indicated the church was targeted by the juvenile based on the racial demographic of the church members. Students, school administrators, and law enforcers and law officers worked together to thwart a potentially horrific incident, he added. Police did not release her name. Now it's funny how she's 16 years old, right? So and she was plotting. Uh, students, school administrators, all of this worked together to 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 thwart this potentially horrific incident. 16 years old, but they're not releasing her name. They're not releasing any information about her. 16 year old white girl. They plan to go in this, 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 this church and commit murder, mass murder because of these people race, but they're not releasing her name. Now, if she was black, if she was a black 16 year old, we know that by now, it first of all would be plastered all over the place. It would be plastered all over mainstream media with her picture, her name, her parents' name, everything about her, whether or not she ever smoked weed, whether or not she, you, you know, she's ever been involved in anything else, you, you know, that, that could even remotely be considered criminal. Everything about her whole life story would be plastered all over the place if she was black. But because she's a 16-year-old white girl, they're not releasing her name. And it's not because she's a minor. Because they do the same thing with police officers uh, that, 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 that shoot unarmed black folks. You, you know, they do the same thing with, with, with other white people that commit these crimes. I mean, it's a long time before they will actually release their names or release any information about them. Because they want to go on the internet and they want to scrub the internet and they want to go on their Facebook and make sure that, you know, there are no racially discriminatory uh, uh, um, posts or anything like that on their on their social media platforms. You know, they, they want to do all of that so they can clean it up and protect these white folks. But if it was somebody black, your name, all your Facebook posts, everything about you would be plastered all over mainstream media, everywhere, all CNN. New York Times, ABC, MSNBC, everybody. It would be plastered all over the place. Police did not release her name. Her name should be re released. Her name should be released because, and not only should her name be released, but anybody else that they have found that, were, that was a part of this or that was in this with her. Because believe me, she didn't plan this all by herself. This is not something that she planned all by herself. The plot came to light when, Greens, when Gainesville High School students told administrators the 16-year-old had a notebook with detailed plans to kill worshipers at the church, Paris said. It just grieves my spirit on a number of different levels. One, that the intentions of this young person were so calculated to do great harm against people who just simply had no knowledge of such a plot said the Reverend Rose John Mackey, director of the New Newton Flores Club, a civil rights organization founded in Gainesville 70 years ago. The girl is charged with criminal attempt to commit murder, the police said. She's being held in a youth detention center in Gainesville. Now look what she's charged with. She's charged with criminal attempt to commit murder. Seems to me like there should be at least one other charge, but we'll get into that. Details of the alleged plot haven't been released. See, no details have been released. Her name is not being released. Why? This young woman posed a threat to the community, not just to the black community, but she poses a threat to the community at large. But just because her target was black folks in a black church, no information is being released. No plot details, her name, nothing. We need to know her name. Everybody in the community needs to know her name. The public needs to know her name. 
Details of the alleged plot haven't been released, but Paris said it came to light Friday when school administrators contacted police. At least they had sense enough to do what they were supposed to do. We're just very pleased that our police department acted so swiftly. And the police department, in conjunction with our school administrators, were just on top of the situation, Mackey said. Gainesville is about 50 miles, 8 kilometers, northeast of Atlanta. It's a city of just over 40,000 people, about 70% of whom are African American. Reverend Dr. Michelle Rizapool, who leads the congregation at Bethel AME, said she was shocked when notified by police about the alleged attempt. When I found out, I drove to the church, went inside it, and prayed and anointed my church and asked God to put a hedge of protection around us. You better do more than pray and ask God to put a hedge of protection around you. You better become aware. You better open up your eyes. You better be careful of the folks sitting in your congregation. Every time you open the doors of your church, you better be aware of who's sitting in your congregation. Because everybody that's sitting there is not sitting there to worship with you. She said in a telephone, in a telephone interview, that was on Friday. On Sunday, I tried to relay what was going on without a lot of emotion so that the, con so that the congregants would remain calm. Yeah, it ain't time for emotion. It's not time to get all emotional and all bat shitty crazy and all of that. It's time to realize where you live. It's time to realize the climate that you live in. The political climate, the racial climate, it's time for you to realize that. And it's time for you to pull all of that emotion out and start acting with some common sense. Because, you know, religion is very emotional. You know, I've been preaching for a while now about being on the battlefield, being a soldier in God's army, and that if you believe that God is in charge, he won't allow hurt or harm to come your way. One of my members told me, you've been getting us ready. I guess I have. Well, you, you, better, you better get ready. And you better get ready with more than just Sunday morning sermons and, 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 and Thursday night prayer service and, 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 and Wednesday night Bible school and, and Sunday morning... Uh, uh, um, Sunday school, you better get ready with more than that. You better be armed and prepared for what may walk through the doors of your church. Rizapool has pastored the church and it's approximately 40 members since June 2018. She said the congregation recently celebrated 118 years of service in the community. I had asked for active shooting training for the church prior to this, but it never happened. Still, I had done a few things to keep us as safe as possible, like upgrading the security system. Okay, see, 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 this woman is thinking beyond some, 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 you know, some spiritual belief that, that, that angels are going to surround the church and protect you. This woman is using common sense. Upgrading the security system, locking the back door, and reminding our ushers, our first line of, of, of defense, just to be a, aware of people we don't know. Exactly. you got to be aware of who's coming through that door. You've got to be aware of who's sitting in that congregation. And you start seeing folk that you ain't never seen before, especially white folk. That you ain't never seen before. All of a sudden wanting to come and worship with you and they ain't never wanted to come and worship with you before. Pay attention. See, I like this. Yeah, she has that religious side, but she's also got that common sense. I live in a real world side. The South has had a the South has had a long history of black churches being bombed, burned, and shut up and, and shut up and shot up. And that's what I was talking about when I was talking about this is rem reminiscent of the past. This is the past repeating itself. Before and doing, especially during the heart of the civil rights movement, that's all they did was bomb our churches, burn our churches down. Kill our, our, our men and our women and our children in our churches. We had, an, we had incidents back here, what was it, maybe two or three years ago, where they had started burning down churches in the South again.
but they would do they would do most of that you know uh under the cover of darkness you know and at night and all of this but now they're just getting bold with it they just walking up in the churches with the guns and just shooting everybody up White supremacist Dylan Roof fatally shot nine black church members during their Bible study lesson at Emmanuel AME Church in Charleston, South Carolina in June 2015. Roof later told FBI agents he had hoped the killings would start a race war. And see, this is who this young woman is modeling herself after. Dylan Roof was her inspiration. And that's the reason why I don't believe that this is something that she was just planning on her own. 16 years old. She was born in 2003. 16 years old. How do you garner this kind of hate towards a group of people that you plan to go in and massacre? Because it's not like she was just talking about killing one person. If she was talking about walking in a church killing, she was talking about doing a mass killing. She was talking about mass murder. Where do you get that kind of hate from at the age of 16? And she certainly was not planning this by herself. That's the reason why we need to know her name. We need to know about her parents. We need to know about her family. We need to know about her home life. We need to know about her background. And we need to know if anybody else was involved in this and whether they still running around out there or not. More recently, the white son of a, of a sheriff's deputy was arrested in April and accused of setting fires that destroyed ble three black churches in rural Louisiana. Holden Matthews is awaiting trial on arson and hate crimes charge and hate crime charges in the Louisiana church building burnings. Associated Press writer Chevelle Johnson contributed to the New York to the to the report from New Orleans. See, that's another thing. I don't understand why this young woman was not charged with hate crimes. That's a hate crime when you target somebody specifically because of their race and plan to do them harm. That's a hate crime. So not only did she need to be charged with, what did they say she was charged with? Criminal attempt to commit murder. She also needs to be charged with a hate crime. And she needs to be charged with terrorism because that's a terrorist act. That's an act of terror. That's an act of terrorism. But see, they're going to try to protect her because she's young and because she's white. And we've heard it before in these courtrooms with these judges, with these white young people talking about, you, you know, they looking out for their future and, and they don't think that this incident should affect the rest of their lives and all of this kind of stuff. But if you're 16 years old with this kind of hate in you already, what kind of future are you going to have? What kind of future are you looking to have? But foundational black Americans, I bring you this story to let you know that, like I said, history is repeating itself. Our churches are now under attack again. So we have got to be aware. We have got to be aware. Aware we have got to get armed up. Like I said, we've got to talk, start taking defense classes and learning how to defend and protect ourselves and our families and our community because they're coming at us from every angle in the workplace on the street in our homes in our churches and they're not coming playing games they coming with the intention of killing they're coming with the intention of, of killing or at least doing as much bodily harm as they possibly can So exercise your right to, 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 to practice whatever religion you want to practice. 
exercise your right to do that because you have a right to do that. But while you're doing it, don't get so caught up. Don't get so wrapped up. Don't get so emotional that you don't pay attention, that you're not aware and that you're not taking necessary measures to protect yourself and your family while you practicing your right to religion, your right to worship in whatever way you see fit. Just like this pastor said, what she said they was doing? Upgrading security system, locking back doors, and reminding your ushers and, the, and, and, and your other congregants and the other people, the other members of the church, reminding them, pay attention. Pay attention who walking through those doors. Pay attention to who's sitting among us. Especially pay attention to folks that we don't know. Folks that have never wanted to come here and worship with us before. Unless it's somebody that a long-standing church member has brought to church with them to visit. Like a, a family member that's coming in from out of town. You know, or a friend that has come in from out of town. Or somebody that they've been trying to get to come to church. And that person just finally decided, okay, well, I'm tired of you bugging me. So I'm going to go to church with you on Sunday morning. But see, that's our problem. That's, that, that's always been our problem. We have always been so welcoming. Just opening up the doors and just welcoming anybody in to our churches, our organizations, our schools, all of that. We just open up and we just let anybody in and just, just welcome folks into our culture. Like they got this saying going on, just invite everybody to the cookout. Well, you can't invite everybody to the cookout. Because you mess around and invite the wrong person to the cookout. And what they do, they shoot up everybody at the cookout. They kill everybody at the cookout. So we have got to open our eyes. We have got to open our eyes, open our minds, and accept the fact that we are at war again. Accept the fact that this is a battlefield. Accept the fact that there are there is a target on all our backs. And we have especially got to pay attention while we're out and about doing the things that we do normally every day. Like I said, the workplace, while you're driving. You see, I just did the story about the three police officers that, 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 that tased the black man to death. And he won't do a number walking. See, we've got to stop living in a fantasy world or, or, or living in this world where we just, you know, where, well, God will take care of it. And, and yeah, but you, you, God is going to take care of some things, but you got to take care of your part. He can't do his part and your part. Your part is to take care of yourself. Your part is to become aware. Your part is to take the necessary steps that need to be taken so that you can protect yourself and your family and your home and your community, your churches, your businesses, whatever. Just like Black Wall Street. Black Wall Street had it going on. The only thing that was missing in Black Wall Street, and I'm sure y'all know about Black Wall Street, that big community that the black people had with all the businesses and everything in Oklahoma, and, and they were really and, and they were really doing the thing. They were doing it. The white folks got upset, they got mad, and they found a reason to go in and destroy it all. It was the first time that bombs had ever been dropped on American soil. And those bombs were dropped by white folks, by white Americans against foundational black Americans. We weren't at war and somebody came over here and dropped the first bomb on us. No, the first bombs to ever be dropped on American soil were done by Americans against Americans. And the reason why they were able to destroy Black Wall Street in the matter of hours, I think I, I, I think in less than 24 hours, it was burnt to the ground was because we didn't have any military force. Foundational black Americans didn't have any military force. We didn't have anything in place to protect us physically, to defend us, to defend us, our homes, our businesses against attack. There was no military presence. We need a military presence in our communities. 
We need, we need folks that have been trained and that are armed and ready to defend the black community, to defend our black churches, to defend our black citizens, to defend our black businesses and our homes. So that these white supremacists and these racists can't, so that they understand, well, we ain't going to be able to just walk up in there and just take over. We're not going to be able to just walk up in there and destroy everything and kill up everybody. Because they ready to fight. Fight and die if it's necessary. We didn't need any laws or anything else to protect us. During Black Wall Street and there are other black communities that were striving like that economically and the white folks just came in and, 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 and just started you know they killing street sprees and they mobs and all of this and politics and laws and policies is not what we needed in place because we were supposed to have those things in place what we needed in place was a military presence the ability to defend ourselves So black folks, you better get it together. You better get it together and you better wake up and you better arm yourselves and you better start training yourselves so that you can protect yourselves, your families, your businesses, your property, all of that. So that when these white supremacists and these racists come in with the idea to kill and destroy and steal, and if they can't steal, well, if, they, if I can't have it, they won't have it either, and all of that, then you're ready to defend. You're ready to protect what's yours. Because they have it. You see, they do their little, they, they, they little compounds, little compounds like, like David Koresh and, 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 and Ruby Ridge and all of these other places where they had their compounds and they were armed and, and, you know, and they had their military presence. And when law enforcement and the FBI and everybody went in to try to get them, they, they were prepared to protect their stuff. But we're not trying to protect our stuff against, you know, just regular law enforcement. We're protecting our stuff against these white supremacists that want to come in and destroy and kill. So go get some training. Exercise your Second Amendment right to to to, to bear arms. Go, go go somewhere and be and 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 get and get registered legally to bear arms, to carry and conceal or whatever. Then go to gun ranges and all of that and practice. Go somewhere and get and, and start taking self defense classes. Beef up the security around your home. And your businesses, teach your children how to protect themselves, send them to defense to self-defense classes, martial arts classes, and all of this. Teach them how to defend, not just the girls, the girls and the boys. You see they snatching uh, 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 black women, black women and black girls off the street, over 75,000 black women and girls missing. You need to learn how to de defend yourself. You need to learn how to be aware of your surroundings at all times. And don't think for one re for one minute that because you're sitting up in a classroom or because you're sitting up in a church or whatever that you're safe because you're not. You're not even safe in the in the in the, in the sanctity of your own home. So you better beef up the security for your home. Make sure you're keeping them doors locked. Make sure that you got a uh, 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 boat locks and double locks and all of this on your doors. But I just wanted to bring y'all this story. 16 years old. 16 year old little white girl. And she was plotting her a Dylan Roof style massacre on this black church. So please share this information.
You understand what I'm saying? Please share this video. Uh, of course, the article will be linked in the description box. Please share this article. You know, have this discussion with people in your family. Have this discussion with people at your church. Have this discussion with people in your community. And, and understand, it's time for us to arm up and, 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 and learn. We got to protect ourselves because ain't nobody going to protect us. Ain't nobody going to look after us. The government is not going to take the target off our back. Law enforcement is not going to take the target off our backs. Why? They put it there. And they intend for it to stay there. If I hadn't been paying attention, I would have missed this story. But this is the kind of stuff that we need to know about. So we can know what's going on in our communities. And we can know the kind of plots that are being organized against us in our communities. So black folks, while you going up in, in church on Sunday morning, you know, understand what all of that hooping and hollering and all of that emotion and all of that, just, just, just be aware. Just be aware. Death may be sitting in that pew next to you. And all of that forgiving and all of that, uh, Jesus this and God said this and God will pr 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 protect us and all that, that ain't going to do you no good when, 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 when all the church members laying stretched out on the floor, shot dead because you won't pay attention to who was in the, in, in the pews next to you. You won't pay attention to the folks that was walking in the door. You weren't taking any necessary measures to protect yourself and the rest of the congregation. But like I said, the link to this article will be in the description box. Please like this video. Please share this video. Please have these conversations in, in your own families, in your own churches, in your own communities. Have these conversations and start taking the necessary steps to protect yourself, your families, your communities, your businesses, your churches. Please hit that subscribe button. Please hit that bell notification so you can be notified when we upload new videos. Please support the channel in any way that you see fit. Please comment. Let me know your thoughts about this story. Put some solutions in there. What type of things can we do to start better protecting ourselves, better protecting our communities, our churches, our businesses, our people? And please, foundational black Americans, wake up, stay woke, and stay aware. Have a good day.